I'm glad to see some people came out. It is very cold out there. We were, we were a little worried because the gaze and the cold. You're with me, right? Yeah. Are you gay? No, you're cold. You're just a cold, you're a cold, you know that the gays are cold, that they don't, they fear the cold. The gays, gays love water, but fear the cold. No one else is laughing but you. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I like you. You got a great laugh, too. It's like a little, like a baby being crushed. <laughs> kind of. All right, very good. How you people feeling tonight? You ready for a great show? We have a... We have a tremendous show for you. We got gays and lesbians and bears and everything. We got everything. What I'm going to need you people to do is anytime she laughs, I'm going to need you to laugh as well if you're a little confused as when you should be jumping in with the laughter. Very good. So we have, uh, is everyone gay? Do we have, uh, besides our, we have one straight woman here, everyone else gay, proud, and not that into it. Okay. Okay. Do we have a lot of closet cases tonight? What are we doing? If you're in the closet, just kind of shift in your seat if you don't want anyone to know. You're amongst friends here. It's okay. You can... Oh, do, we're doing a live show, by the way, so you can respond to me if uh, I, you guys thought I know it's a TV taping, like there's some kind of five second delay or something, but no, uh, I'm here and can hear you and see you. So. so do we have any married gay people here? Do we have any married gay people? Any Mormons? Do we have any Mormons? We're all in a fight with the Mormons, which seems bizarre. Doesn't that seem weird that gays now hate the Mormons? Like a Mormon, wants to have a lot of wives, and I want to fuck one dude. Why are we fighting? What are we fighting over? What are we fighting over? Thank you for that smile, sir. That was a very supportive <laughs> smile. Yeah, marriage. I, you know, everyone's freaking out about marriage. Personally, I, I honestly, I'm like so sick of the whole marriage thing that I would actually rather screw straight people than get married, get gay married. Like to me, I'll give up. They always say it's the sanctity of marriage, right? It's the sanctity of marriage. I will give up marriage if straight people prove the sanctity of marriage by never getting divorced. I think that would be, don't you? <laughs> Not funny per se, but a political statement. I <laughs> think everyone was like, no, we want it. Okay, fine. You'll get it. It's coming. I have a feeling, I have a feeling that it's coming. Very good. This is very exciting. Are we, are we excited for, uh, for Obama by the time this airs? <laughs> by the time this airs, we will have our first black president. I have to say that the one thing that I'm a little bothered by is this Rick Warren. We all know about Rick Warren, right, with the saddleback. We can boo him. This is going to be on a gay network. You want to? No, we still fear him. Okay, we fear them. Uh, I'm a little annoyed about the Rick Warren thing because I heard him on, uh, on the Today Show and he was saying that gay people should control their gay feelings like other people control their anger. Did you hear that? Did you hear him say that? Which sort of implies that we're all like little gay hulks, kind of, you know? <laughs> like we're all walking around like, don't make me angry. I suck dick when I'm angry. <laughs> are you guys hurting? Are, are the gay? I feel like the gays aren't hurt as much by the economy. Are you guys? Am I right about that? I've never heard any of my gay friends like, I don't have money to go out tonight. I can't do it. My straight friends haven't been out since Bush became president, basically. <laughs> well, how are you guys doing? I didn't mean to ignore you right in the front. What's going? What, what's the situation here? Is this some kind of? You got a big smile, so something good's happening. The man is smiling. He's got two women. What's going on? Uh, they're together. They're together. Work and you work with her. Is anyone gay here? No. No, just good old-fashioned straight people. Yeah. Well, good for you guys. Yeah, and if you want to chime in at any other time, you feel free. We'll see. All right, guys, we, we have a tremendous show for you. You guys ready for a great show? We got a great show for you. Uh, we're going to start this off. This man was not even scheduled on the show. And at the last second, I said, I think we need a little bit of this type of homosexual. Let's get him on and see what happens. I think they need it, and we're going to give it to you guys. He's a very funny guy, one of my best friends in the business. Please give it up for Sean Hollenbach, everybody. <laughs> Sean Hollenbach! <laughs> Dave Rubin, people, come on! <laughs> Ladies, isn't he fuckable? Come on. 
Especially in the front row. You two wanted to like, uh, uh, I know. Don't we all, men? Where are my gay men at? Where are my gay men? You're not proud. Let me hear it, you motherfuckers. Come on. Gay men, let's hear it! Oh, God. So wait, I just want to find out, I just want to find out where you guys live. Who lives in, who's a Manhattan dweller? That, don't raise your hand. This is for TV. Like, like, let's hear it. Who's Manhattan dweller? Be proud. That's right. He's proud. He's wearing a suit. He owns his own apartment. Ladies, gentlemen, someone fuck him. All right. So who lives in Brooklyn? Queens people. You Queens people. Well, I, I live in an inconvenient neighborhood. I live in upper Manhattan. I live in Inwood slash Washington Heights. It's a, I mean, it's a, it's, it's okay. Like, I'm not gonna pretend to love my neighborhood, but there's some people in New York City who pretend to love their neighborhood, and they don't care. They're gonna say, like, oh my God, I live in this really great neighborhood. It's called East Williamsburg. I mean, some people call it Canarsie, but whatever. <laughs> it's like so close, you know? It's like 17 stops outside the city. It's so close. So close. But I feel like Astoria residents love their inconvenient neighborhood the most of anyone else. Those motherfuckers love Astoria. They're like, oh my god. I live in Astoria. It's amazing. We have the beer garden. There's beer in seats. You can't get that in Manhattan. I'm an actor, can you tell? <laughs> Only actors live in Astoria. I, I swear to God, it's true. It's like Jersey Light out there. And for those of you that live in Indiana who are watching this, do, it's a Wikipedia it. Okay, uh, you just need to know. You need to know when you come here, Macy's isn't the only thing you want to see. You want to go out in the outer boroughs a little bit, not too far because you're going to get date raped. <laughs> I've been there. You've seen me in a dumpster behind the Olive Garden in, just kidding, I'm just kidding, people. It's on my Wikipedia page if you read, all right. <laughs> so this is like my B-side jokes. I've done, this is my second episode for Hot Gay Comics, so I'm excited to do it again. This is exciting, this is B-side. Are you excited for that? Because yeah. you know that Thelma Houston song, Don't Leave Me This Way, was a B-side? And look at the big hit, so tonight's gonna be a hit people. I'm very excited. So let me tell you something. Uh, I need to tell you, I want to pitch my own shows to VH1. Does anyone else watch VH1 here? Okay. They had like all those I love shows. They like, I love, I love New York. I love, you know, all these people. I want to pitch my own. And, and can you guys let me know if they're good ideas? And before I go into the office, can you guys do that for me? You're discerning people. Okay. First show I want to pitch is called Avalanche of Love starring Bruce Valanche. It's where 12 twinks fight to be his houseboy. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, right? How about um, Side of Rice starring Condoleezza Rice? <laughs> it's where Condoleezza Rice and 12 log cabin Republicans have to make it work. <laughs> That's good, right? She's a dyke, isn't she? She's munching out some foreign pussy. <laughs> I can smell it on her lips. <laughs> It's true. And the last show I want to pitch, which I think will be amazing, is called I Love Healthcare, starring Gary Coleman. <laughs> where Gary Coleman fights real poor people for healthcare. <laughs> I think it'd be pretty great. I would watch all three of those shows. But watch Here TV, 325, if, Time Warner Cable. It's true, yes! I watch my shelter, I watch my lair. If you go, don't, you need to, it's hot. Hot naked vampires, I love it. Bite me, I love them. So what else can I tell you, it's exciting. Um, oh, so I wanna tell you this. So I feel like I don't fit in so much in the gay community. Yeah, I'm adorable, but <laughs> I feel like I grew up poor and I, I sort of brand myself as being fabulous, F-A-B-U-L-E-S-S. -S. You know, I live in Inwood, I'm fabulous, you know? I make less than $50,000 a year, fabulous! I'm performing in a nightclub in front of people who probably won't watch me, like my family. Fabulous. 
But it's good. Good. My family, they have no idea what I do. They really have no clue when I'm on gay television. Because <laughs> I don't tell them. Uh, <laughs> lovely people. But fabulous. I have to tell you, so I did grow up very poor in Pennsylvania. And I, when I grew up, I only had seven shirts. And being the gay poor kid that I was, I used to keep a list of all the shirts that I had and what I wore every day so I would wear the same shirt in the same week. And this fucking bitch one day comes up to me and she's like, <laughs> Sean, <laughs> didn't you wear that shirt the day after yesterday? <laughs> I was like, no. Like in my head, of course, I keep a list. Like I know, I know. And she's like, are you sure you didn't wear that shirt the day after? Yesterday? <laughs> I'm like, no! I keep a list Rocketeers yesterday. Puppy Unicorn shirt was the day before. And now she's fat, so I feel good. You know what I mean? I feel, look at this. This is hard. This is hard to maintain. With a, yeah, I'm 24 years old, press release age, people. So it's really hard to look 24 when you're 35. All right, so just kidding, I'm not 35. <laughs> Inside. Oh, dear. What is that? So I, I have to tell you a story. So this is a story to tell you, do not do drugs at work. <laughs> Can we get on board with that? And I'll tell you why. I, in college, I used to work for Victoria's Secret. And I don't know why. But it was a lovely job. Women's fragrance, bras, it was fantastic. Glitter, Tyra, it was amazing. So one day, I have a Filipino drug dealer friend who's like, let's go to DC, it's fall break. And I was like, I'm in town, sure. <laughs> so we get in his lovely Camaro, and we go to DC, it's fantastic. And he's like, I have uh, two sugar cubes of acid, you wanna try one? I'm like, okay, it's fall break, of course. So I like crunch, 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 do one, and they're like, I feel so energetic. I'm having the best time of my life. I don't know what's going on, but I don't really see anything. He's like, you want another one? I'm like, okay. <laughs> crunch, crunch, crunch. Two hours later, I'm like seeing the craziest stuff. The floor is moving. Everything's happening. I'm like laughing in my head. I have a twin brother. I was imagining our, our twin language when we were babies, and I thought it was hilarious. I'm like, this is amazing, people. And so the sun's coming up, and I have to go work in the morning. I'm like, what am I gonna do? So my friend says, well, you know what you need to do? You need to bring yourself down. How about we smoke some weed? <laughs> and I'm like, sure. So I smoke some weed, and so now I'm like tripping and I'm high, because I'm hungry. And I'm like, what am I gonna do to go to Victoria's Secret? I can eat lotion, but what am I really gonna do <laughs> at Victoria's Secret? And so he's like, well, wait a minute. You just smoked, you're tripping. What are we gonna do? You, you haven't slept all night. Like, what are we gonna do? I was like, uh, I don't know. He's like, how about some crystal meth? Sure! <laughs> I do some crystal meth, and I go to work on acid, on weed, and crystal meth, looking crazy. <laughs> I walk in the door, and this woman who normally works with me is so sweet, this is what I saw in my head, what she said to me. I'm sweating my ass off going from the crystal mouth. And she's like, Sean, can you tie my shoe? What are you getting your mom for Christmas? Is what I saw, but really it was probably just like, Sean, can you tie my shoe? My back hurts. What are you getting your mom for Christmas? But this is what I saw in my head. And Tyra kissed me on the mouth and got me a sex change. Because that's what she does. That's so you guys know, do not do drugs at work. Am I right? Okay. So that's a good thing. So last thing I want to tell you before you go is that I feel like in the gay man universe, I think the happiest gay man, I think they date the person that they look like. Don't you think? Like the bear will date the bear. Like the twink will date the twink. And the muscle guy dates the muscle guy. I would totally fuck me, but it wouldn't call me back. <laughs> Because I'm fabulous! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Son Hollenbach. Have a wonderful night! Yes, thank you. Oh, I've had a crazy day. I went and I got my eyebrows waxed this morning. Um, thank you. I spent $10 on myself, you know. Um, I, you know, I'm laying there and she's waxing my eyebrows and then she looks at me and she's like, 
I'm gonna give you a complimentary chin wax, okay? <laughs> That's not really complimentary, bitch, <laughs> you know? Like a compliment might be nice shoes, or your vagina smells fresh. <laughs> Basically, she's like, you're the hairiest Jew I've seen all week. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, really made my day. Um, I just got back from Florida. I went to visit my grandmother in Boca Raton. Yes, so you all know my pain. Has, that, has anyone ever been there before? Yeah. South Florida? Like, I need a vacation from the vacation, okay? Um, 10 family members go to stay with my grandmother in her one-bedroom condo. <laughs> we could have each just pitched in $10 each and got a room at the Super 8. That would have made more sense. Um, so, you know, we show up, and she's so OCD. Like, we, we, we show up there, and my mother's nudging me. She's like, you know grandma's, like, OCD. Just shut up, I'll pay you. Just deal with it for the week, you know? Um, and she's standing there waving, and, and she's like, hi, guys, uh, can you take your shoes off outside? I just got a new doormat. <laughs> like, what? Should I take a shower before using your soap? <laughs> like, it makes no sense, you know? Uh, she lives in this old age complex called Journey's End. <laughs> you think that's bad? The one across the street is called Time's Up. <laughs> uh, you know, we're sitting there eating dinner, and it's like silent. We're just like all eating, and she hears the siren going down the street. Uh, so she's like peering through the shades, and she's like, Oh, Stella's dead. It's all right, it's all right. She has an N unit in California closets. It will go quick. <laughs> This is what I have to look forward to in my life, you know? Um, oh my God, and then she's like, Amy, I signed you up for a water aerobics class at sunrise. I don't even go to the gym. <laughs> I would have burned more calories eating a steak and cheese sub and flexing my Kegels. <laughs> oh. And then she wants me to go with her to buy her first cell phone. You know, I'm like, is this, Grandma, you're 85 years old, is this really necessary at this point in your life? And she's like, listen, I just want to keep in touch with everyone in case there's an emergency. Who is she, James Bond? You know? Because if my car is flipped over in a ravine and I only have one bar of service, I'm not calling old Bobby. <laughs> you know, she can't even find the phone. We're late to the early bird, you know? And she's like rummaging through her underwear drawer, like under bubble wrap and girdle. She's like, I don't know where my phone is. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, what, what is the problem? Like, where did you put it? She's like, I hid it. I don't want anyone to steal my phone. <laughs> like, that's just what a home burglar wants, a refurbished cell phone you get free with Sprint. You know? <laughs> oh, my, my family's crazy. They're just, they're crazy, crazy people. My parents would have been married 30 years this year. <laughs> would have. Would have, um, but they, my mother calls me up. She's like, listen, you know, I, I think 30 years is just too long, and uh, a divorce is just too expensive, um, so your father and I are just gonna become roommates. <laughs> Good plan, Mom, you know? Uh, and she's already moved on. She's met a nice guy. He's, he's a young 50. Um, they met on Facebook. <laughs> You know, uh, that's fine, uh, I'm happy for her. Like, congratulations, mom. Uh, here's the problem. I searched Craigslist for three years straight, <laughs> and all I meet is an African tranny that had a sex change on a sand dune. <laughs> okay? You know, I was talking to her the other day, and she's like, oh, I got a part-time job. I'm like, oh, congratulations, mom. I'm like, where are you working? She's like, oh, a law firm. 50% off divorces. <laughs> like, how much of a Jew do you have to be to take a job like that for the discount, you know? Like, what's next? She needs, like, a colonoscopy, so she's gonna date the proctologist, you know? <laughs> it's crazy. Really, really crazy. Uh, but my father, growing up was tough. You know, my parents didn't have a lot of money, and my dad would take these crazy jobs just to, like, make money for the family. Um, I remember my junior year of high school, they always had those like pull tabs on the bulletin boards, like make money quick this summer. Um, my father would pull those tabs. Next thing you know, he's selling Tiger Beat subscriptions door to door with Ashley from Homeroom. Yeah. Didn't really make much money, but he did help raise money to get the special ed class two new computers. 
Uh, but then senior year, he takes a job as a limo driver, which is fine, not normal, but fine, uh, until he shows up as the driver to my prom. Yeah. Like, that's a clam jam you can't really get yourself out of. Yeah. He's in the limo and he's snapping open that window. He's like, it's prom, I love you. I remember the day we were in Walmart and you got your period for the first time. Uh, and my date's like, who is this guy? I'm like, my dad. <laughs> it's my dad. Um, but then um, when prom season was over and there was really no work, he took a job at the local escort service driving the girls around. Like, there's this three prostitutes in, like, the three-mile radius of my town, okay? Courtney, Trishel, and my cousin, Jessica. <laughs> and he's driving them around town like a soccer mom, you know? Uh, but there's nothing like sitting there on a Sunday morning at the kitchen table and my, eating lox, eggs, and onions, and my dad's on the phone, and he's like, I told you that Dominican has the day off on Tuesdays, and she doesn't do anal. <laughs> Like that's my childhood. <laughs> Whoa is right. Whoa is right. Uh, so I'm really excited. I'm in a new relationship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we've been together for a few months, but we're basically married. She put me on her Blockbuster account. <laughs> There's quite an age difference between us. She's actually 18 years older than I am. I know, it's a long time, it's kind of an age difference. Um, so she graduated high school in 1984, and that was also the year that I was born. And that was also the year that Michael Jackson came out with Thriller. So one day we were sitting there, I'm like, oh, so uh, you were doing the moonwalk. And I was learning to walk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's really crazy. But that's like, that's like being 18 years old and saying, a baby was born today that will one day tie me up and lick mustard off my nipples. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm totally kidding. I don't tie her up. I don't tie her up, that's disgusting. <laughs> it's honey mustard, come on, it's honey mustard. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, I'm not really into PDA, but I find that, uh, you know, I'm okay with it now um, because people just think I'm being really affectionate with my mother. <laughs> I'm such a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, but we're thinking about adopting. There's so much, you know, there's so much that goes into that, so much paperwork, there's home visits, it's like stressful, you know, we're having trouble deciding, she wants a chihuahua, I want a shih tzu. <laughs> it's a lot, it's just a lot for me. Um, so does anyone have that friend who um, has lost a lot of weight and now they're just a douchebag? <laughs> anyone? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I recently had weight loss surgery. Um, it's called the, thank you, thank you, I'm lazy, thank you. Uh, it's called the lap band. Basically, they put a band around your stomach, so if you eat too much, you throw up. It's like socially acceptable bulimia. <laughs> you know, but I didn't know how to go about like choosing the surgeon, so I was like shopping and shopping for the right person. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go with the person who did surgery on a celebrity that's still alive. <laughs> so I went with Al Roker. And um, I, laugh. I thought it was a good choice, you know? And we meet for the consultation. At the end, she shakes my hand. She's like, don't worry, in a few months, you're gonna look just like Al. <laughs> a middle-aged, bald black man? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but people have really, they say the craziest things to me about the surgery. Um, I told my grandmother about it first, and um, you know, I was like, I didn't really know if she knew what it was or what, you know, exactly what was going on. So I was like, listen, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a surgery that's gonna benefit me. It's gonna make me healthy and make me happy. She's like, Amy, are you having a sex change? <laughs> I'm like, listen, I don't really wanna get rid of it. I just wanna be able to see it. <laughs> that's all. Um, and then I told my mother about it. And the first thing she said to me is she's like, oh, um, so when you're thin, are you gonna go back to dating men? Right, because the less carbs I eat, the more dick I crave. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. My name is Amy. All right, so nice to see everybody. 
Well, the gay boys are out. Have fun. Hi, faggots. I'm guessing Project Runway wasn't on tonight. Okay. That's what brought you all out. And the lesbians are out. Have fun. The lesbians, how wonderful. Did you lock up the bookstore early? Good for you. Got yourself a cat sitter. And you came on. Good for you. Good for you. Fantastic. So glad to hear it, people. <clears throat> All right, kids. Well, I've been gay from go. <laughs> I guess the cat's out of the bag on that one, right? Yeah, I'll put it to you this way, people. The moment I slid out of Karen Brill's thighs, that doctor picked me up on my ankle, slapped me on the ass. I turned and looked at him, and I said, is that all you got? <laughs> Dr. Man. That's exactly what I said. I see what you're looking at. Behave yourself. You better be careful. She bites. Be careful. Be careful. So do you people, honestly, do you think all of this was a personal choice? Honestly, no, it wasn't, okay? Do you think I wanted to have a dynamic personality and be a wonderful dancer? No, I didn't. It's just the cards I was dealt, kids. Just kind of the way that happened. Absolutely. Very exciting. I think my family knew I was gay before I did. <laughs> there was no holding back with that shit. I remember like when we were kids, I had an older brother and like 4th of July, my brother would be like, yeah, like blowing up the neighborhood. You know what I mean? All the dogs and cats and Barbie dolls were frightened because he was going to blow them up too. But I, on the other hand, was completely infatuated and still am in love with sparklers. <laughs> I was like, these are the most amazing things ever. like over by the barbecue crying. <laughs> yeah, that one's mine. <laughs> Can I get another one? Of, another one of these, please. <laughs> All right. Let's bring it back down, people. Okay. You all right? Okay. All right. Yeah, so coming out to them really wasn't a, <laughs> it was a big shock to them, especially mom. I remember the day I told mom I was gay, I was like, mom, mom, could you come in here for a second? What, Michael, my shows are on! <laughs> mom, I'm sure Pat and Vanna can get through one puzzle without you. Could you please just come out here for a second? Oh, Jesus Christ, Michael, what the hell do you want now? Mom, I have something to tell you, what is it? Mom, I'm gay. Uh-huh, Michael, what's the news? What, did I just fucking move in here? I know that! <laughs> Sorry. I just wanted to share with you, Mom. I just wanted you to know, how could I not know, Michael? Who am I, Helen Keller? Of course I know! <laughs> Sugar, you're as gay as a carousel in springtime, honey. You're gay! Hey, kids, stop the press, it's big news. Your brother's gay. Take out the garbage. Where are my cigarettes? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mm. You all right? Everybody take a minute. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have another uh, cousin, actually. He, he's the only one in my family who doesn't know he's gay. Uh -huh. Poor slob, all my big Italian cousins are always busting his chops. They're always like, hey ho, Steve-o. <laughs> you seeing anyone? <clears throat> yeah, what's her name? Frank? <laughs> my poor cousin Steven's like, I don't have to put up with this. Mother, get my wrap and color me gone. <laughs> Pull around the pink Mary Kate Cadillac and I am so five minutes ago. She's like in like pedal pushers and some kind of earth clogs. I don't know what's happening with her. It's terrible. It really is. <laughs> Poor Steven, right? Anywho. So are we excited, people? Yeah! We're excited. Been traveling a lot lately. Very fun. 
host is actually in Aspen, Colorado. Oh, Aspen, you say? Yes, I just did. It was fantastic. It's storybook. If you haven't been there, go. Wait till I finish, but then go directly after that because I tell you, it's amazing. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm a very nervous flyer, so on the way there, you have to land in Denver on your way to Aspen. You all right, sugar? It's not like there's anything going on. Don't worry, throw your shit on the floor. It's fine. It's not distracting at all. <clears throat> I'm kidding. So I'm walking through the Denver airport, and all of a sudden I see one of those random massage stations. What the fuck is up with those? They're like in nail salons, street fairs, airports. What the fuck? I'm walking past, and there's like three Korean women screaming at me. They're like, massage, massage, massage. I felt like an American GI in a three-day pass in Bangkok. <laughs> the fuck is happening here, ladies? And let's bring it down a few notches, OK? I want you to climb up into that chair like some kind of funky praying mantis. Oh, this is nice. This is comfortable. Because, of course, when I think of relaxation, I think of being rubbed down by a Korean stranger in an airport. Hands? Yeah. Absolutely. What? Put my face where? Oh, good. In this padded toilet seat where a thousand of the greasy mugs have already been? That's nice. So I'm like, fuck this. I'm trying to like scurry away and I got Mei Ling behind me. She's like, but wait, you seem very tense. I'm like, I'm tense because you're chasing me through an airport. Get out of here. Very scary. So then you get to Aspen, right? And they also don't tell you when you get there. It's not, it wasn't in my memo or in my little backseat flyer. I had no idea that when you get to the high altitudes, it's very hard to breathe. I had no idea. I get off the plane. I'm like, this is absolutely... <laughs> Mountain. I was like, what did that sky whore load the back of my throat with cotton while I was sleeping? What the fuck is going on? It was terrible. They also don't tell you that when you They also don't tell you when you're there. I'm sorry, sparklers, I keep getting excited. Um, they also don't tell you that when you're there in the high altitude, you get very gaseous. You get a little gaseous. Yeah, I'm walking around the town of Aspen. It was like everyone had vegetarian chili for lunch. The fuck is going on? I love Aspen. I'm like, I could have just stayed in New York and went to visit Nana at the nursing home. It would have been the same shit. Just add a house coat, right? I mean, the same shit. Hi, Michael. Come on in. One vanilla wafer. <laughs> no, Nana, what I want is an open window because you're rotting from the inside, okay? <laughs> Cheese and crackers. I tell ya. Poor Nana, I know. She has Alzheimer's. Sad. I mean, silver lining, she's constantly meeting new people, which is, which is nice for her. Oh, it's terrible. She's like trying to change the TV with the cordless phone. What the fuck? Why isn't this working? I like take the TV remote. I'm like, here you go, Nana. It's for you. Okay. I'll be over here. So Barack Obama, everyone, are we excited? Yeah. Barack Obama! Very excited. Kept it real for the inaugural ball, right? He figures, I'm not having no big fucking fancy gala. I'm going to keep it real and just have a big old barbecue right out here on the front lawn of the White House. Wow! Pass me a rib. I'm going. Totally excited. I think Little Kim actually has a little mini concert in the Rose Garden with Little Kim. Very exciting. <laughs> hey, Michelle, what's with all these rose bushes? They're all prickly and pretentious like Cindy McCain. Rip them out, girl, and get yourself some Gerba Daisies up in here. Let's sing a song, Michelle. My neck, my back, lick my pussy and my crack. Yeah, people, I know that's not Little Kim, but I just love that song so much. <laughs> Nana used to hum it to me, but the point is, people, mm-hmm, she did. Absolutely. Now, I mean, just by a show of hands, do we all know that song? She, right, she wants you to lick her neck and her back, her pussy, and her crack. Now, come on, by a show of hands, who thinks she's being a little selfish? Come on! It's one or the other, bitch. What the fuck? I've got a job, honey. What the hell is going on? A life to lead, right? And then she wants you to go from the back up to the front, brother. 
Now, ladies, honestly, there's a urinary tract infection waiting to happen. Come on. Son of a bitch. Careful. All right, people. So I'm getting older, which is really fun. Hair is falling out in clumps. So excited. Yeah. Just saw my nieces the other day. They're like, Uncle Mike, why don't you have any hair on top of your head? I'm like, who's got time to maintain a full head of hair? Honestly, right? They were like, honestly, but really, what happened? I'm like, I don't know. It's like some kind of fucking strange crop circle. I don't know what happened. Maybe this is just God's way of pre preparing me for future brain surgery. I don't know. <laughs> know what's happening. Put it to you this way, people. I'm ready to convert to Judaism just with a little hat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thank you all so much. My name is Michael Brill. Woo! Rampa! All right. Oh, look at that. I can see your shoe. It's nice. <laughs> just thought I'd announce that. Oh, so it's great to be here. I know that I'm sure you're looking at me. I know the way I dress and my hair. I look pretty obvious, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Actually, I like being a vegetarian because people always want to make me dinner. You know, for some reason, they're always offering, ooh, because it's like a major accomplishment for them to make a meal without meat. <gasps> and I'm like, you know what? It's not a big deal. I do it every night. You know, maybe you got to be a little more creative when you're cooking. Right? Maybe you're going to have to eat a little better than you're used to. But honestly, it is not that hard making french fries and chocolate pudding. <laughs> not at all. It's a piece of cake, which is good too, actually. If you think about it, it is. It is. <sighs> but, uh, you know, there's stereotypes with being a vegetarian that I'm sure you're familiar with. People think, you know, if you don't eat meat, that you don't have any energy and you're weak and, you know, you're lazy and all that. And it's not true. You know, I'm very active. Uh, you know, I do a lot. I, I'm very happy. I feel healthy. And I'm proud to be a vegetarian. And I actually found out that here in New York City, they have a veggie pride parade. No, really, you know? We got praise for everything. And they have one for vegetarians. And I was so excited when I heard about this. So I studied to find out, you know, all about it. And I found out we get to march down Fifth Avenue, which is a pretty big deal, you know? I'm, I'm very excited. So uh, we start off on 14th Street, and we march right on down to 13th Street. <laughs> and then we take a nap for the rest of the day. <laughs> so... I think I can handle it. I, I'm ready. I've been practicing, so. But, uh, you know, actually, I am of the lesbian persuasion. Although you need not persuade me, I go very willingly. <laughs> it's not a problem there. And, you know, if I'm not meeting all your stereotypical lesbian needs, I'll be more than happy to come out and hit you with my wallet on a chain. <laughs> no problem. No extra charge. Yeah, so. I actually just recently got out of a two-year relationship. Hey, thanks for assuming that I got dumped. <laughs> so, yeah, no. Uh, but we were together for uh, two years, although it was pretty much doomed from the beginning because uh, she was on Zoloft and I was on Paxil. <laughs> so even when we were happy, we didn't care. <laughs> no, not at all. But, uh, you know, after we broke up, I did, I did do a lot of thinking. Um, and I actually realized that the relationship I was in before that one was also two years. And even the one before that was two years. And then it finally occurred to me that I'm a community college for women. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, apparently, if you're not sure what you want to do with your life, you need to date me for a while. So... <laughs> Which is actually pretty cool, because now I hold a sexual orientation every fall. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of nice. It's fun, you should come. <laughs> but, you know. But, uh, so, you know, my new girlfriend just enrolled this semester, and, uh, you know, I'm hoping it works out, so. Uh, I recently, uh, I recently got a puppy. Anybody have a, a, a dog? Anybody's got dogs? Just that one person back there. You guys familiar with dogs? They're little... <laughs> Little things, you know, run around, hairy. 
not to be confused with small lesbians, because um, they can be hairy as well. Uh, but no, mine is a dog. She's a, she's a little puppy, and I, I love her. She's the cutest thing, and she's just amazing. She's uh, wonderful, but she does has a, has a very odd habit. She will eat her own poop. <sighs> you too, huh? All right, well, um, no, it's, so it's, it's weird, and it, and it made me nervous for a while, because uh, I, you know, I didn't know what to do. So I was explaining this to my friend, and she's like, you, know, you don't have to worry now, because they make a pill that makes the poop taste nasty. <laughs> Wait. So what do you think the research end of that job's like, huh? <laughs> Some guy in a lab like, no, you know what? This still tastes pretty good. We need to uh, go back to the drawing board because uh, I'm gonna take this for lunch. <laughs> it is tangy, I love it. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm, goodness. Yeah. Oh. So I've been, uh, I've been working my creativity. I'm trying to be more creative in life. Uh, and I learned one way to do this is through meditation. I don't know if you guys ever meditate or anything, but uh, specifically, if you meditate on your second chakra, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the chakras, they're like power points in your body. Well, your second chakra is the center of your creativity. So you meditate on this, it goes through the roof. So, you know, Interestingly enough though, your second chakra is located three inches below your belly button. <laughs> now correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I thought being creative was thinking outside the box. <laughs> it's just, it's supposed to be that way. So I am, uh, I am from New Jersey. Is anybody else? R really? <laughs> That's disturbing. Um, cool, but you know, I'll be seeing you for a ride later. <laughs> Works out well. Uh, I've actually lived in New Jersey my entire life. Um, I work there during the day. I do have a j day job. Um, I work in a lab where we test for and remove toxic waste. So I'm removing New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, so, sadly enough. Yeah. Uh, actually, I was getting ready for work recently, and I was running late. I don't know if you guys ever do this. I'm running around uh, really crazy, like, and uh, I just jump in the shower, and I'm in there, and I'm, uh, I'm shaving my legs, you know, because I do that. And shaving, shaving, shaving. I come up really fast and cut my nipple. <laughs> it's all right. I have another one. <laughs> but let me just tell you, this does bleed a lot. This is like spurting. It's very scary. So I'm standing there in the shower alone for a change uh, and spurting blood. And so it was really freaking me out. So I just, I kind of got out nice and slow and I went over and I sat down on the toilet to try to figure out what to do, right? Now, so you think the, the main concern I'd have right now at this moment would be to stop the spurting blood and, uh, you know, reattach my severed nipple. <laughs> no, but actually, this is not what I was thinking. This is not what's going through my head. What I was actually trying to figure out was how I was going to explain to my boss that I was late for work <laughs> because I cut my nipple off <laughs> shaving. Yeah. Just so you know, you can only use this excuse twice. <laughs> and then it just gets a little fishy from there. It's just not right. No, no. No, it was a... But it was a learning experience because now I know what those little round band-aids are for. You just <laughs> pop on and go. Thank you guys. You guys have been wonderful. My name is Joanne Filan. Oh, uh, excuse me, microphone stand. Hi, guys. Hello. It's nice to be here. I... Um, <clears throat> I love, thank you, here, thank you, here, channel, and uh, hot gay comics, it's nice. Those are three words I've had problems with over my life, and I'm dealing with it. It's great. Um, yeah, sure. I 
I was at work, um, sitting at my little cubicle, you know, getting my work done with, uh, my cubicle's great. There's like no windows, no oxygen, no people. It's nice, I'm very happy there. <laughs> um, but no, I was getting my work done. I was on the computer, um, working very diligently. And by working diligently, I mean I was, you know, looking at pictures of raccoons. <laughs> but no, I was, but no, I, no, I was uh, getting my work done, getting my work done. And, um, and I came across this website, this random, like, weird web website. Um, uh, what, what was it called? Uh, Yahoo? I don't know, whatever. And, um, <laughs> and so I, that, I came across this article. There were this, this column, this kind of like, uh, sort of their, their version of Dear Abby called Dear Margo. And uh, the heading for that week or that title on Dear Margo was a family spat about gay visitors. So I was like, you know, I see the word gay. I'm like, what, click, double click, what, gay, more please, what? <laughs> so, so up comes this letter that this woman wrote to Dear Margo about gay visitors and being upset about it. And um, I found it highly entertaining, so I, it, I would like, I'd like to read the letter to you, if that's okay. Um, and I know some of you may be thinking, well, oh, read a letter, great. What a cop-out, asshole. No. So I have, uh, I've decided to make it more exciting by, um, I've given you all a gram of Coke under your chairs. Enjoy it! No. I didn't do that. It's a lot of money. I looked into it. Um, no. I've decided to, I'm gonna read the letter in the style of the woman who wrote it, or my screwed up version of it of what she would sound like. Um, so here it goes, this is the letter to Dear Margo on the Yahoo. Okay. <clears throat> Dear Margo. My husband and I have been together for 19 years. Mm-hmm. For 19 glorious years, we have walked in the hand of Christ. I don't know what that means. Hand of Christ? Uh, we have had normal problems over the years, Margot. Yes, we have. We've had normal problems. But now, Margot, now, there is one problem we just can't seem to work through. You see, Margo, my husband is a self-employed contractor. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And one of his employees is, um, is, a uh, <clears throat> gay. <laughs> and I have told my husband that I would prefer he not bring this man, and I use quotations, man, <laughs> into our home because this man <laughs> makes very inappropriate remarks directed towards me and our cheering. <laughs> so, all right, at this point, I'm thinking, you know, what exactly are these inappropriate remarks? This woman fails to mention what they are. So you're left to think that they're just really horrific, terrible things. Like this gay man is coming to his boss's house and talking to the kids and being like, hey, hey guys, what's your name? Oh, Timmy, it's cute, it's great. What's your name? Oh, Tommy, great name, buddy. Hey, listen, listen. Um, do you like secrets? Yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> My, uh, my favorite pastime is uh, to suck on cock. I love to suck on cock and suck it, suck it, suck it, suck it. Mm, yummy. Yeah, why are you crying? Why are you crying? It's just a secret. No, like he's not saying stuff like that at his boss's house. He's just, he was probably like, you know, my boyfriend and I are planning a trip to Florida. And she was like, ew, planning trips with gay people. Ugh, Satan, stand back. You know, whatever. And you know, she ends the letter, she's like, um, am I wrong to take such an unyielding stance on this issue? And it's signed, um, stupid old cunt. No, I made that part up. It doesn't say that. I made that part up. 
Um, whatever. And Margo was actually very cool. She replied with like, um, I think you're teaching your kids how to hate. Okay, love Margo. So, whatever. That was good for Margo. Oh, yes. Oh. Um, alrighty, I, uh, I reached a milestone in my life. I, um, <clears throat> I recently stopped going to see a therapist after like seven years, thank you, thanks. Because I'm happy now, <laughs> no, I ran out of money. <laughs> ran out of money. Um, but it's fine, because this therapist, he was, uh, he was not good at his job, which, you know, I should know not to just pick the therapist in town who's the cheapest, but um, whatever. And I can't, I'm, I can't really explain to you how bad this guy was, so I, instead I'm just going to, um, reenact for you any given moment with my therapist. So it would start out, you know, like, oh my God, I, uh, I hate my life. I, um, I don't know who my real friends are anymore. I, I'm in a dead end job. Um, my parents don't really know the real me and I, uh, I'm never gonna experience love, I don't think, and I just wanna curl up in a little ball and never leave my apartment again. And then I would say something like, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Am I early? I don't know. Do you want some gum? I got some gum. Okay, you know, I'm just I'm gonna wait outside. Alrighty. Um, so yeah, I'm done with that, freak. Um, all right, so um, <clears throat> I've been working on a, a, a character. I'm working on a new character. <sighs> character. I took drama class. I did. Um, so the, the character's name is um, Steve, the overly gay stand-up comedian. So it's me, basically, after one drink. No, all right. Um, so no, uh, so um, yeah, please welcome to the stage Steve, the overly gay stand-up comedian. They're so hot. Look at you, hot, young, hi, young. Oh my God, you guys are so hot. So, um, so, um, you guys, you guys, listen up, listen up. Um, so I've been reading in the news lately. I've been reading in the news lately. About, I've been reading about priests. Priests molesting little boys. I'm like, no, don't, mm, no. I'm like, where were you when I was an altar boy? Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, I made a joke. <laughs> ah, I made a joke. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Very cute. Um, <clears throat> so you guys, you guys. So, um, I found out recently that um, the area between the ball sack and the asshole is called the taint. It's called the taint. What's that? I always thought it was called the chin rest. Hello? Hello? I made a joke. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, oh my God, you guys, you guys. I was at the Natural History Museum, and I went along those two little tours, you know, or like, like a dinosaur bands. And, um, and the tour guy was really hot. He was like, you know, Vin Diesel, Jason Statham hot, you know, like he stinks, but you don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, <clears throat> and at the end of the tour, you know, he was like, do you guys have any questions? And I was like, I do, I'm here, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, when do we see the Megasaurus? <laughs> Hello! I made a joke! Um, <clears throat> all right, uh, that's it. I, uh, I'm gonna go. You guys have been very sweet and kind. Have a great night, thank you. All right, people, we are, that is our show, but I did, I was working back there, I'm a professional, and I thought, you like impressions? I normally, I haven't done this one in years, but I was thinking back there, what can I do for these good people? This is my impression. It's the only impression I do. I literally haven't done it for years. This is my impression of Yoda having sex. Yoda having sex.
Thank you. You literally closing your eyes the entire time, which is bizarre because you can hear it. It's not a visual. That was weird. I wasn't pretending I was Yoda. You were just shutting it down altogether. Yeah, very nice. Uh, guys, thank you very much for coming out. You guys were really a fantastic crowd. Give yourself a round of applause. So thank you guys and have a great night. Thank you.